Okay, let's take a cup, a look at a couple of common diseases of the endocrine system. Um, it's we're not going to talk about every potential disease that's out there. There are tons. You may need to take a full pathology course um, to understand them all. However, let's look at a couple that are related to medical terminology. So first up, I have the term hypothyroidism. We're going to first start by breaking it down because it really will give us all of the clues we need in order to be able to understand what's happening here. So let's go into our word breakdown for hypothyroidism. And again, if you want to try it on your own, please hit pause real quick. Okay, so the prefix here is hypo, which refers to being low, too low, right towards the bottom. Um, thyro, thyroido, okay, both refer to the thyroid gland in general, so that little guy in your neck. And ism is the suffix that refers to a condition of. So if we just look at the strict word breakdown of hypothyroidism, we're looking at a condition of having low thyroid hormone or a thyroid gland that is producing too little. So when we look at hypothyroidism, that's really what's happening. And so if your thyroid hormone is slowing down, okay, what it's responsible for is your metabolism. It helps you to maintain your body temperature. It helps to maintain um, good enough energy balance inside the body. So you're going to see stuff related to that if it's too low. So you're going to see things um, like your pulse slow down, your muscles um, will feel a little bit weak. Your extremities are going to be cold because you're not producing enough to maintain a higher metabolism. You might see a lot of fatigue, uh, poor appetite, um, shortness of breath. Your skin might become a little bit paler. Um, so all of these symptoms are really related to that low level of thyroid hormone, reducing your metabolism and making things a little bit slower inside the body. Okay, so next up, we're going to take a look at a very common disorder of the endocrine system and probably one of the most common ones you're going to see, which is diabetes. There are several um, signs and symptoms to look for, everything from blurred vision to a change in the smell of your breath. It could be very acetone right, or smell like paint thinner. It could also um, smell like urea, could smell very sweet. You could see a lot of nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Um, you usually see a lot of urinary changes, so urinating too much. Um, you may actually see increase in respiration, either weight loss or weight gain, depending on the type, um, and then differences in your nervous system. So let's take a look at some of the reasons that this happens. So while this isn't going to be an all-inclusive discussion on diabetes, let's look at the two main types. So we really classify them into type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So type 1 generally happens at a younger age, and so the pancreas really stops working, and in particular the insulin portion of the pancreas stops working, and so we're not able to break down and store away the sugar. This is usually due to um, the immune system attacking itself. There's a genetic component and some other theories. Um, however, right, this is usually just something that happens. It happens quite suddenly. And so it usually becomes obvious over the course of a couple of days. Type 2 diabetes is a little bit different. This one tends to be in a little bit older um, age range, um, although we do see it in several ages. This one is not so much where your pancreas stops working suddenly and that you can't produce the insulin. But generally what happens is you become what we call resistant, meaning that you're producing insulin, it's just not working as it should. There could be a lot of reasons for this. One of them is lifestyle factors. So having a higher fat um, content leads you to being resistant to insulin, um, less physical activity and muscle tone leads to this. But there is also a genetic component and some other things that lead into type 2 diabetes. Um, but you are having a proper pancreas response, at least for a short period of time. Um, you're just not able to effectively use the insulin. And so what happens is you really can't break down sugar properly.
And so this leads to something we call hyperglycemia. And so we're going to break down this word because this one is very simple to break down to help explain what is happening here. And again, if you need to pause, pause for a second. Okay, so hyper is the prefix, which again means excessive, too much, right above. Glyco is our root term, which refers to sugar. And emic or emia, so either ending, refers to a blood condition. So hyperglycemia really is having too much sugar in the blood. And so we don't want that. This does create a series of problems um, that will persist. And so what we can do is we can give a series of medications. If you're not making insulin at all, we do have to replace the insulin. If you are resistant to insulin, there are a series of medications that might be taken um, by mouth. They could be injected. It really just depends on the severity of what's happening, and the doctor makes that decision.